In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this yoga bag. Wait, 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 wait. It's cooler than it sounds. So you might not need a bag for a yoga mat, despite the fact that you clicked on this video. Uh, and this bag could be used for a number of purposes, uh, your juggling clubs or your law rocket. Uh, but there's some tips in this video that might be helpful for other projects. This bag is one of my simpler projects. Uh, there's no lining and no binding at all. I'm going to show you a simple method to make clean finished seams without binding and without having to do any real complicated sewing. Uh, just real quick, the dimensions are uh, the, the piece that makes up the main body is about 28 inches finished, so it's probably 29 inches or a little more. Uh, had a half inch seam allowance on the bottom and I don't really know how much I hemmed on the top. Uh, I did a roll top closure. To be honest with you, I had a different plan and then decided at the last minute to make it a roll top because I'm planning a roll top backpack and I thought this would be a good uh, way to try it out. Um, I really should have made it longer to have more room for the roll top. It, it fits, but barely. The bottom is a circle with an eight and a half inch diameter. Uh, and that means that the body panel had to be 29.62 inches plus seam allowance, and I did a half inch seam allowance. Uh, so if you need more information about how I came to that conclusion, then the sandbag video I did a little while back goes into more detail. But basically you take the diameter of the circle, multiply that times pi, or two pi times the radius to get the circumference, and that gives you the number you need. I made a reasonably simple pocket on the outside, just a Velcro flap closure. Uh, it is uh, kind of a bellows pocket, so there's some volume to it. Uh, and that way I can put my wallet and my phone and my keys in and just carry this into the yoga studio and not have to uh, have a bunch of loose stuff. I'm not going to talk about yoga a lot in this video, but I will kind of give you an idea why I like to do yoga at the end in case you happen to be interested. I think this video might be best described as a vlogtorial. Uh, that's a word I just made up. Um, but basically I'm going to show you most of what I did without going into great detail. This is not how to make this specific bag as is the case with most of my projects. Uh, I'm just sharing what I did and hopefully you can get some tips to apply to solve whatever problem you're trying to solve with your sewing machine. Let's check it out. I've already cut out the pieces for the bag. I uh, just have the main piece that's going to make up the body and I've got one piece to make up a pocket, and another piece to make up the top flap for that pocket. So the first thing I need to do to make the bag is to take the two ends of this uh, rectangular panel that's going to make up the body of the bag, and I'm going to sew them together. Ordinarily, I would sew it together with the right sides together. This is a uh, 1000 denier Cordura in a pattern called Cryptek Typhon. It's kind of hard to get. I got this on eBay. They used to sell the material, uh, the company, Cryptek, used to sell this material. Uh, and now I think they only sell it to uh, manufacturers of gear. I don't think uh, us normal people can get it. I found this on eBay. Actually, a subscriber found it on eBay and kindly told me about it, so I grabbed a couple of yards. At any rate, this fabric has a right side where the pattern is clearly visible and a wrong side. Normally uh, when we sew stuff, we sew things right side together and then turn them inside out so that the seam allowance is on the inside. And that's how I would normally do this and then I would have to do some kind of edge treatment, binding or folding or something to conceal that raw edge so that the material doesn't ultimately fray and cause the seam to fail later down the road. So in this case, I'm gonna sew it together wrong sides together. Now I need to turn... Wait a second. So uh, I got ahead of myself, which I do a lot. Uh, I needed to put these pieces of webbing with 
D-rings uh, in that seam before I sewed it together. But that's no big deal. I'm just going to seam rip open the spots where I want to put them and sew them in, no problem. The D-rings are to allow the attachment of a removable shoulder strap. Now I can turn this inside out. Before I cut my piece, I determined that I needed a half inch seam allowance in order for this piece to be the right diameter when it's sewn to go around the circular piece that'll go on the bottom. So when I sewed the first seam, I sewed a little bit less than a quarter of an inch, and then I can sew a little bit more than a quarter of an inch on this seam, and that will ensure that I capture the raw edge completely. I'm also going to shorten my stitch length just to give a little bit more structure to this seam. For this project, I decided to use my FOF 260. It's an excellent vintage domestic machine, but it did struggle with 1000 denier cordura from time to time. It got it done though. I don't know if this is going to show up, but I just missed catching the edge. Uh, just a couple of inches right here, so I'm just going to go back and sew a little bit farther in to make sure I've captured that raw edge. To make the pocket, I first taped the edges of the pocket piece with basting tape, then folded them and sewed them down. I added a piece of loop fastener, aka velcro, to the front of the pocket piece. I repeated the taping, folding, and sewing of the edges of the pocket flap, and added the hook fastener to the inside of the flap. And I had some help. So I was just editing this video and I realized that somehow I failed to capture any of the forming of the bellows of the pocket. Uh, so I'm just going to show you on this piece of scrap, but uh, the piece I used for my pocket was I think nine and a half inches by nine inches or something. It doesn't matter because you should make the pocket that fits your need, but uh, it was, you know, about nine inches square. And I wanted it to be about two inches deep, so I just measured in two inches from the side and folded it and let me show you. So, so basically you just make a fold at the line that you want the edge of your pocket bellows to start and then sew down the fabric close to the edge of that fold. And then Fold it on the other side, again, however deep you want it, about two inches. And that gives you the three-dimensional shape to make the pocket. And then on the bottom, I just folded it back on itself and tacked those folds down. And then this is what gets sewn to the body panel to make the pocket three dimensions. <clears throat> so it wasn't my plan to make a video of a bunch of mistakes. But I seem to be making a bunch of mistakes. I should have sewn that pocket on before I put the bag together. Uh, but I'm just going to wing it. And I think there's some value here. Uh, I could make videos that make it look like I'm a genius and do everything right the first time every time. But that's not true. And sometimes I have to improvise or take stuff apart. In this case, I'm trying to make this quickly. So I'm not going to take anything apart if I can help it. Let's see if it works. To be honest, I got a little lucky here. This machine is a flatbed machine and is intended to be used while inserted into a table or a case. 
Because I have it sitting on the top of the table, I can use it a bit like a free arm machine, pulling the fabric around the base to access the hard to reach areas. A free arm machine would make this even easier, but the best would be to have done it before putting the bag together. When using a flatbed machine in this way, your material and your fingers are potentially exposed to the rotating or oscillating hook under the machine, which is sharp. You could easily damage your fabric or injure yourself. I don't recommend that you try this, and if you do, you do so at your own risk. At the beginning of this video, I said I had already cut the pieces for the bag. Well, I forgot to cut the circular bottom piece. Now I'm going to sew this bottom piece onto the body, and I'm going to use the same method I did for the uh, main seam on the body. First, I'll sew it wrong sides together. Looks like I did my math right. No wrinkles. I'm just going to trim that seam allowance consistently all the way around to make sure that I catch it on the first try when I flip this inside out and sew it again. Now I'll just sew around the seam from the inside to capture the raw edges. So now I'm just putting a double fold hem in the top of the bag. Finally, I sewed webbing with a side release buckle to the top of the bag. And there you have it, possibly the world's only yoga bag made out of 1000 denier cordura in Cryptek Typhon. Overall, this was a really simple project. And if I would have been more careful to avoid mistakes, it would have been even simpler. But I'm happy with the end result, and I'm really looking forward to using it. By the way, the term yoga refers to a widely varying form of physical exercise, sometimes with more or less spiritual or meditative components. It can range from monks in robes chanting to soccer moms in yoga pants essentially doing dance aerobics. At its core, yoga is essentially a practice of breathing while maneuvering one's body through challenging physical postures. I find yoga to be a great complement for the rest of my fitness regime. The kind of yoga I generally practice is thoroughly modern, is practiced in a room heated to 95 or so degrees, and is physically challenging with enough of the meditative stuff to satisfy me. There is also loud music, and the instructor says bad words a lot. If you've never considered yoga, just know that there's a wide variety of yoga practices and you might have to try a few to find the right one for you. If you liked this video, clicking the like button really helps me out. If you have questions or comments, post them in the comments section, and if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I'd love to have you join us as a subscriber. Thanks for watching.